HC0, this doesn't mean that we're breaking up, okay? I'm still gonna come around and visit. I'll still, look, I have the HC0 goggles coming, okay? So I wasn't gonna be using HC0 on this old pair of HDO2s anyway. I guess after the HD0 goggles come, I won't be using you very much either, HD0 module. I... Sorry. You gotta do what you gotta do though, right? Until recently, if you wanted to get into the Walksnail digital FPV system, you basically had two choices for which FPV goggle you were gonna use. And both of the choices had severe downsides that really gave people some pause. The first choice was the Fat Shark Dominator goggle that you see here, and then just recently, Fat Shark released this, the Recon HD, which is a box goggle with a walk snail receiver in it. And you're probably saying to yourself right now, Bardwell, what about the third choice, which is the walk snail Avatar goggle? And I don't really count that as a third choice because the walk snail Avatar, the Fat Shark Dominator are identical in every way except the color and who you contact if you need support for them, but they're basically the same goggle. And the big, big drawback of these goggles is that they only support the walk snail system. You wanna do analog? There's no analog input. You wanna do HD zero? There's no HDMI input. You just can't use them with anything else. And that's fine if you only wanna use walk snail, but a lot of people don't. A lot of people have other quads with other systems, and they don't wanna to have to buy a whole second set of goggles in order to use them. But there's another type of person who is left out of this new walk snail ecosystem. And that's the person who has a perfectly good set of analog goggles sitting around. This is a set of HDO2 goggles, and uh, they cost, I don't even remember, five, $600 when I first got them. They're amazing. Mm, they don't have the same resolution and frame rate as the Dominator, the Fat Shark Dominator goggles, but they're pretty good. And they've got an HDMI input too. So why can't I use them with Walksnail? And that brings us to the product that we're looking at today. This is the Walksnail Avatar standalone video receiver. And it lets anybody who has a set of goggles with an HDMI input take advantage of the Walksnail digital video system. It's kind of a weird choice for Cadex to make because I think it means that Fat Shark's gonna sell a whole lot less of these Dominator goggles, but it might mean that Cadex sells a whole lot more Walksnail systems to a whole lot more people. Well, bad for Fat Shark, good for the consumer? That's what we're gonna find out. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're gonna learn something today. I don't usually do unboxing on camera, but I wanna open this with you so that you can see what comes with it. It's such a weird and unusual product. I think it's worth doing. Uh, and first we've got a quick start guide that documents what all the different buttons do. That's very nice. We've got the video receiver itself, of course. We've got a couple of antennas. These are Walksnail's own uh, branded antennas. Historically, they have had extremely poor performance and I would recommend that you upgrade them as soon as you possibly can. I've got links in the video description to some suggested antennas, but just about anything will probably do better based on how bad these have historically been. Uh, we've got a, uh, looks like double-sided mounting tape, I guess for gluing it to the front of your goggles. I'm not 100% sure about that. We've got a screw for screwing it to a bracket on the front of your goggles. And we've got a DC barrel jack splitter, so you can split the power coming from your battery and feed your goggles and the module. And we've got a small uh, mini to mini HDMI cable. One thing that's noticeably not included with the package is a mounting bracket for your goggles. The one that you're looking at here is the one that came with my HD Zero receiver, and it fits on the Fat Shark goggles and it screws right in here. I'm sorry to tell you that the geometry of the Walksnail video receiver does not let it work. The screw holes just don't line up. It doesn't have the right freedom of movement. Um, it makes sense that Walksnail wouldn't assume what goggles you have and what type of bracket you're gonna need and they wouldn't make a zillion different brackets for every possible goggle out there in the world. It seems like if you wanna mount this on your goggles, you're gonna be relying on someone to come up with a 3D printed bracket. I have seen a couple of these floating around and I will try to collect links to them and put them in the video description, but I've done some cursory searching today as I'm recording and I haven't been able to find them 
uh, so I may not be able to find them. I'll do my best. As we talk about the Avatar VRX, keep in mind that it's basically the same product as the standalone Dominator goggles, just without screens. So the features and controls are basically the same, and hopefully the performance will be similar too. Of course, we're going to test it a little later in the video. So for example, we've got a joystick here that moves you through the menus. We've got a bind button. We've got a DVR record button, a back button that backs you out of the menus, and over on this side, we've got an SD card slot and a power input, just like the larger goggles. One difference is that the standalone VRX has an HDMI output instead of a USB-C output. Either way, it's gonna output HDMI to a display. It is a mini HDMI, so you're probably gonna need to buy some adapters or cables because I'm willing to bet not too many people have mini HDMI sitting around. Another difference between the module and the goggles is that the module doesn't have four RPSMA connectors. It's got two RPSMA connectors on top for whatever kind of antennas you want to put there, and then two built-in patch antennas. Now those patch antennas are connected via a standard UFL connector to the board inside the module. And if I'm feeling really ambitious, we'll open it up later in the video and take a look at that. Um, I don't know anything about the performance of these patch antennas because this is the first time that we've seen them. So are they as bad as these Omni antennas or are they properly made? We don't know yet. All right, it's time to power this thing up and see how it works. And in order to power it up, we're gonna need a 2S to 5S battery. Yeah, just like the Dominator goggles, it is not rated for 6S input. And like, you may remember that at Walksnail originally said the Dominator goggles were rated for 6S. Fat Shark said they were only rated for 5S. Some people tried them on 6S and blew the voltage regulator, so it seems like Fat Shark was right. This guy only says 5S. So what am I gonna do? Because I got a ton of 6S batteries. Well, the simplest thing to do is to get a uh, cord with a voltage regulator built in. We're gonna status, oh, oh, she's waking up, boys. <gasps> That's it, we're here. It looks, it looks just like the walk snail goggles. Like if I press the menu key, oh look, it looks just like the walk snail goggles. Uh, I can see I've only got three channels here. If you need to unlock this, I've got a video about how to unlock it. And if you need to do the 1200 milliwatt hack so that you get maximum output power, I've got a video about that too. It's linked down in the video description. Voila, there she is, the camera's upside down. Uh, and the firmware versions are out of date. Um, so let's talk about firmware. Uh, this VRX does not have the same firmware as the goggles. Uh, there seems to be a separate one in the zip file that you download. There is a GND for the goggles, and then there is another one, GND something. I'll put it on screen so you can see it. So if you do flash firmware, make sure you're flashing the right one. Oh, I can move the OSD around. Wait a minute. Oh, that's really freaking cool. I don't, <gasps> does it support the high definition canvas? Oh, it does. Oh, that's hot. Uh, so Betaflight supports, uh, you see that the, the OSD is only in like a 4.3 uh, box because it's as if it was an analog camera, but Betaflight 4.4 now supports a widescreen canvas so you can put stuff on the sides of the screen instead of just having it all clustered in the middle. And it looks like, it looks like Walksnail now supports that. That's freaking hot. Oh, I can move it up and down too. <gasps> this is freaking amazing. That's so convenient that I can move it like that. That's freaking amazing. It'd be nice if I had the ability to recenter it automatically. I don't, some of these features are in this new firmware that I haven't seen yet. Now there's something that people are doing by accident and it is making it so that the output to the screen or display device doesn't work. I wanna demonstrate it to you now. Notice that my frame rate is standard frame rate, but if I go in and change that to high frame rate, my picture will go away. Okay, so you see it says invalid format here. The reason is that by changing to fast frame rate, I have caused the VRX to output a 720p 100 frame per second signal. And this screen doesn't support 100 frame per second. Your FPV goggles don't support 100 frame per second. In fact, very few display devices do. 
uh, one of the only display devices I can think of that would support that would be a high frame rate gaming monitor, like a computer monitor. But you, you may not have one of those. So what the hell are you going to do? Well, you could just try to like guess where you are in the menu and push the buttons and uh, luck. No, that's lame. Um, uh, there is a safety mechanism. It's documented right here in the card uh, where if you hold the back button for eight seconds, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm just gonna keep holding it for a little while. Press and hold, still holding. It'll, it'll put it back at 720p 60 FPS. I'm gonna let go of the button and see what happens. Oh, it's changing and it's back. Oh, it looks like it goes to 1080 60, not 720 60. That's interesting. I guess probably more devices support 1080 than 720. Mm. Well, my video transmitter has started to overheat, so I've moved the quadcopter back over to the table with a fan on it. Sorry about the fan noise. What well, let's, let's try next is the most exciting thing. Let's try plugging this SOB into some analog goggles. And I'm just going to sort of mock this up as if it was mounted to the goggles. The screw won't actually go through there, but it'll just friction fit so we can kind of get a sense of what it's like. Uh, we're going to use this splitter that comes with them to split the 9 volts and feed that into both the goggles and the module. Great. That's that's a little clunky. Uh, I personally like the way Fat Shark did it where one of them is a 90 degree. So you can put the 90 degree in the goggles and it's not hanging out like this, but it's not the end of the world. And then we've got this mini to mini cable, which mm, is going to work fine, but oof. It's not pretty, is it? It's not pretty, right? Like, you're far from the sexiest FPV pilot of the field with all this nonsense hanging off of you. Uh, it'd be really cool. Can you use this cable, which is sold for the HD Zero system? <gasps> yes, you can. Oh, it looks gonna work. Oh, that is way more low profile. So, that looks way better. Yeah, um, you can buy that aftermarket. Uh, I'll try to find a link. It's not widely available, but I have seen it around. And if I can find a link, I'll put it in the video description, but forgive me if it's not there. Let's talk about things you should be thinking about when you're deciding what goggles you're gonna use with this device. And the first thing you're gonna to wanna to think about is the aspect ratio and resolution of the screens in the goggles. So this HDO2 goggle right here has a 1280 by 960 screen. And that's key because the walk snail VRX can output either 720p, that's 1280 by 720, or 1080p, that's 1920 by 1080. And if you think about those numbers, you can see that the screens in this HDO2 can completely display the 1280 by 720 feed from the VRX. It's 1280 by 960. That's just a 4-3 aspect ratio, uh, but if you just chop the top and the bottom off, you've got a 720p screen. Except there's a little bit of a quirk. These HDO2 goggles can only display a 4-3 aspect ratio feed from the HDMI input, which means that if you send them a 720p signal from this VRX, they will stretch it vertically. And you'll see a little bit of distortion because you no longer have a one-to-one -one pixel mapping uh, from the video feed that's coming in versus what's being displayed. Is this a deal breaker? Well, the stretching kind of might be a deal breaker for some people. Uh, theoretically, WalkSnail could implement a firmware that letterboxes the image how embarrassing <laughs> to be doing letterboxing in 2022, but theoretically they could do that. You get a little bit of reduction in resolution, uh, but mm, it's a thing. Uh, HD Zero does something like that uh, for goggles that only have 4.3 or only have 16.9 screens. But that is going to be a limitation of using this specific set of goggles. On the other hand, the Orcas will correctly letterbox, will correctly display the 720p screen on their 1280 by 960 uh, displays. And it's noticeably better uh, that, I, I assume it's just the one-to-one -one pixel mapping that we're not doing any sort of interpolation or stretching. Uh, obviously the image is no longer vertically stretched and you get a really clear, crisp 
display. Now, neither of these goggles are going to be able to properly display the 1080p image. If you fly walk snail in 1080p, they will have to scale that down to 1280 by 960, and there are going to be some artifacts from that. How noticeable is that going to be while you're flying? Well, I think people are going to differ, uh, but I think many people are just going to be happy to be able to use the system at all and are going to be willing to accept that. I'm sorry to say that at this time, these are the only two analog goggles with HDMI input that I have to test with the video receiver. So I have reached out to the folks on my Discord server and asked to borrow a whole bunch of other goggles, including the SkyZone, Sky 4 x the SkyZone Cobra X, a few other older goggles that I think it might be interesting to see how the system works. And I also have the HD Zero goggles, which are supposedly being shipped to me, uh, but I don't have them in hand yet. So I'm going to save the actual hands-on testing for a future video. But suffice it to say that if your goggles have the ability to take a 720p uh, input through the HDMI, they should at least be able to display a picture from this system. And if they have the ability to take 1080p and scale it down, well, I mean, to it's debatable if you don't have a 1080p screen whether there's any real benefit to running the HD zero or the walk snail system in 1080p but they may be able to scale that down to whatever size screen that they've got whether that'll happen without with stretching without stretching with letterboxing without letterboxing is going to vary from goggle to goggle that's one of the things you're going to want to think about when you're deciding whether this VRX is going to be a good match for the goggles that you're intending to pair it with. The other thing you're going to want to think about is latency. And I think latency is potentially going to be more of a deal breaker than you might think. Here's how we're going to measure the latency. I've got a flashlight here and the flashlight is going to turn itself on and off. And I've got a GoPro recording at 240 frames per second, and it can see both the flashlight and the image in the goggles. At 240 frames per second, that means each frame is about four milliseconds. So all I have to do is scroll through this and find the frame where the light begins to turn on, and then the frame where I first see that happen in the goggle, and then subtract the difference, and I know the latency. Before we look at these numbers, there's two things that I got to tell you. And the first is that I did all of these tests with the goggles in 720p, 60 FPS, low frame rate. And you might say, why didn't you test them in 100 FPS, high frame rate to get the latency numbers down? Are you making the goggles look worse than they really need to be? No. And I'm going to tell you why after we look at the numbers. But there's an important reason why you might not be able to use the high frame rate mode. In fact, you probably won't be able to use the high frame rate mode. The other thing you need to know is that the goggles were displaying a latency of 30 to 32 milliseconds for pretty much all of these tests. And that's the latency that you expect to see and that they advertise for the 60 FPS low frame rate mode. But the numbers that we're going to see are higher than that. And the question we're going to tackle is, is that because like the Fat Shark HDO or the Orca is adding additional latency compared to the Dominator? Does that have something to do with the HDMI output on the VRX? Or is that they're just not reporting accurate numbers? Let's start with the results for the HDO2 goggles. Uh, don't let the fact that it says HDO2, 3, 4, 5, 6 there. It was all the same set of goggles. Excel is just trying to be helpful and was guessing that I wanted to number this sequentially. The elapsed number of frames was extremely consistent. 10 frames for every single test measured. Uh, by the time I got to five of them, I was like, it looks like it's going to be the 10 every time. And I stopped measuring. Uh, that gives us 41.7 milliseconds of latency when the Walksnail VRX is used with the HDO2 goggles. The Orca goggles were a little bit higher. They had two additional frames, which gives us 50 milliseconds latency. Um, I'm not sure why the Orcas were higher. I mean, the Orcas are in some ways like a more sophisticated goggle. It's plausible to me that they're doing some kind of processing that maybe takes a little bit more time, but they're also highly optimized for performance. The numbers are what they are. I also tested on that 7-inch display that you see me using. The brand name is Lilliput. It's a 7-inch display made to go on like a camera and act as a monitor for the camera. It's more optimized for brightness and resolution and perhaps color accuracy than it is for latency. And that number is reflected in the results. We had a latency of 
80, almost 80 milliseconds. One reason for that might be that it has HDMI pass-through. It's got an in and an out, and it's possible that they're, the way that they're doing that is adding latency. Mm, the takeaway from this is that if you're going to try to fly with anything other than a device that is optimized for latency, like an FPV goggle or a gaming monitor maybe, uh, then you might end up with more latency than you're really comfortable with. And finally, <laughs> I got the original Dominator HD goggles and I ran the Dominator Raider HD goggles and I ran the exact same test to try to see how the latency stacked up. Number one, because I noticed way back when I very first reviewed these goggles that the latency numbers that they were reporting on screen were lower than the actual latency numbers that I was measuring. In other words, it seemed like they were fudging to make themselves look better. And they advertise these numbers too. They advertise 21 milliseconds latency and they show it on screen, but I was getting numbers that were between five and 10 milliseconds higher depending on which mode I was in. I reported this to Walksnail and they said, oh, there is a bug in the way that the numbers are displayed. We will have to fix that. And today we're gonna find out if anything has changed. And no, nope, nothing has changed. Uh, 41.7 milliseconds latency, 10 frames delay for the Dominator HD goggles. All the time the goggles are showing 30, 31, 32 milliseconds on the screen. And there's no HDMI bridge or output or input or anything. This is with their own goggles. They control this 100%. Those numbers they're reporting are inaccurate. And when they advertise 21 milliseconds latency, that is not, I, I, that does not consistent with my results. And when they say they have better latency than DJI, that is also not consistent with my results. But it is interesting to see <laughs> that the HDO2s had just about the same latency through their HDMI input as the Dominator HDs with their built-in HDMI, with their built-in system, which suggests that there is really basically no additional latency being introduced by having to run this through an HDMI output. And on some goggles and display devices, you're going to have more latency than others, but you're really not putting yourself at a latency disadvantage by using this, except that you are for the reason that I told you I was going to tell you about, which is that there aren't any goggles out there right now that support more than 60 FPS frame rate input. So you can't use the 100 FPS high frame rate, low resolution mode with this device, unless you have a display device that supports it. And actually, I'm wrong about that. There's one set of goggles that does support it. Can you guess which one it is? It's the HD Zero goggles. Just today, I learned that a beta firmware for the HD Zero goggles exists that allows the HD Zero goggles to run at 720p, 100 frames per second. And I know they only advertise those screens as running at 90 frames per second. And I was like, well, how are you going to be compatible with Walksnail? You got to make this work. And Carl, superhero Carl at HD Zero, magically made the goggles suddenly support 100 frames per second. So if you want to use this and you want the best possible latency, there's only one set of goggles out there you should even be thinking about using it with. And if you're using it with any other set of goggles, you're gonna be having latency more in the, let's say, 40 to 50 millisecond range. And that's best case. That's best case. As soon as you fly away from yourself and the signal gets weaker, that latency is gonna go up another five or 10 milliseconds. You're gonna be in the 50 to 60 millisecond range, real latency, not what they show you on screen. And you got to think hard about whether that's okay with you. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these things on my dang face and we're going to see what it's like to fly this system. We're going to see how these antennas hold up compared to some upgraded antennas and the stock antennas. And we're just going to see if you can even do it. Like, what's it like? But before I do that, it's time for the sponsor spot. And the sponsor of this video is you, is you. Or if you want. Patreon.com is the single best way for you to help support this channel. It's like subscribing to me. You can subscribe for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount you pick is completely up to you and you can cancel anytime you want. Patrons get access to my Discord server, which is full of helpful, friendly people. It's got a troubleshooting forum, a buy, sell, trade forum. You can talk about just anything you want regulated to FPV. But mostly what I want you to get out of your Patreon subscription is 
the great feeling that you're helping support the work that I do here. If you're learning stuff, if you're choosing better products to buy, or if you're just having a good time, entertain, listen to me talk for an hour. Whatever you feel like that's worth, head on over to patreon.com. There's a link in the video description and sign up. Uh, how do I look? <laughs> it's time. It's time to fly it. We're going to be using the Orca goggles because of all the goggles I currently have in my possession, they're the one that seems to give the best looking image between the two of them. All righty. So the standard test that I've been doing when I'm checking out a new walk snail device is to do a perimeter, a periphery run of my yard. Uh, I stand right in this location and I face the patch antennas of the goggle at the barn, which is the most sort of obstruction that I see when I fly around my house. I try and stay at the fence level here. I come through here. This is the part where the signal tends to get the weakest because we're going through the barn. I come around here and then I'm gonna do one more pass. And we can just watch the uh, bit rate and latency as we go. Uh, I am at 700 milliwatts, not 1200 milliwatts. I am at 25 megabits per second, not 50 megabits per second. In my experience, in my personal testing, I find that raising the output power to 1000 or 1200 milliwatts tends to produce less stable, uh, less stable results. It's more unstable and, and I don't uh, like it. And then 50 megabits per second also seems to produce less consistent latency and uh, not necessarily better image in every location. So it was a pretty impressive result for 700 milliwatts. I've done this exact same test several times, many times with different equipment, different antennas. That's about as good as I think I've seen Walksnail do. Uh, maybe these uh, crosshair antennas are actually half decent. And in a way, the question of can I freestyle it is kind of uh, possible for me to answer because I suck as a pilot. Uh, in a way, the question of can I freestyle it is impossible for me to answer because the goggles that you're using will have a big effect on your experience of flying this system. Um, if you're using a, a si wow, it's very windy. God does not want me flying. <laughs> If you're using a display device that has higher latency, you're gonna have a harder experience. Um, but if you're using one with good latency, you shouldn't have fundamentally that different of experience than if you were using something like the Dominator HD. Um, we know from the bench test that the, uh, on the right set of goggles, the latency is comparable to the Dominator HD itself. And then it's just a question of image quality and screen quality, which is uh, entirely dependent on which goggles you choose to use. Um, I am not feeling super comfortable right this minute, to tell you the truth. I'm hanging back a little. It's not because of anything to do with the quality of the screens, but it has to do with the fact that I haven't been flying these Orcas as much. and just the exact way that the lenses interact with my eyeballs. And my brain hasn't adjusted to it yet, so I'm feeling a little hesitant. But uh, the smaller screen of the Orca compared to the Dominator HD is probably making it a little harder to see some of the fine details. Uh, but it's not that much smaller. It's a little smaller. And frankly, if the alternative was you know, analog, I think a lot of people are going to feel that this is a better experience and that they're getting the promise of the digital upgrade without having to spend whatever, $500, $400, $600 on a brand new set of goggles. When Walksteel put this video receiver up for pre-order, they announced that they had taken over 4,000 orders for it. 4,000 people put up $200 to get a chance at this system. It is hugely popular. And I think for a lot of people, it is going to be the most cost-effective way to get into digital HD FPV. It'll work with your existing analog goggles pretty much at almost any price point. You'll be able to get some experience, even if you're not getting the full resolution and the full glorious OLED potential of the system. I mean, 
HD Zero comes in at a similar price point. So I don't know why all of these people who are jumping on the walk snail system didn't jump to the HD Zero system, but this isn't a video about HD Zero, so we don't have to try to sort of figure that out. But this video receiver isn't gonna be for everybody, and I wouldn't want you to get so caught up in the hype that you buy it and then find out it's not right for you. And the main limitation that it's got is the latency. Now, we know that systems like DJI and WalkSnail already have higher latency than analog and HD0. Analog and HD0 come in sub 20 milliseconds, let's say, whereas these systems at their best are at around 20, 25 milliseconds. And generally, as you get further and further away, they get up closer to 35 or even 45 milliseconds. But this system when used with most FPV goggles that you have today is gonna to be in 60 FPS low frame rate mode. And that is gonna push the actual latency as I measured into minimum 50 milliseconds and under real world conditions as you fly further away up into the 60 or 65 millisecond range. And you're gonna to have to decide how latency sensitive you are, but I feel like somewhere between 50 and 100 milliseconds is where I would literally bet money. I could tell the difference, I could feel it. And somewhere below 50 milliseconds, when I've tried to do tests to see if I can feel the latency, I usually am not able to tell. So if you are somebody who's a casual flyer, if you are somebody who knows from past experience that you don't care that much about the lowest possible latency, then this may be a perfect way to get into the system for you. But if you're somebody who wants the absolute lowest, certainly racers, well, racers probably shouldn't be using the walk or the DJI system anyway, but especially if you add in any additional latency by being forced to use the 60 FPS mode with most goggles, then this is not gonna be a system for you. Again, keep in mind, I will be doing a video where I'll be testing a whole bunch of goggles to specifically see how they perform. I've got some loaner goggles coming in the mail. The HD Zero goggles are coming and Remember, they will be able to do the 100 FPS mode. So we're gonna be testing that. When that video is available, don't hold your breath, I'll put a card on screen and a link in the video description. In the meantime, if you're still on the fence about whether Walksnail, DJI, Analog, et cetera, is for you, I did a video where I tested four different quadcopters, which were identical except for those systems. And I think it's a good little insight into the pros and cons of each of them. I'll put a card on screen for that and a link in the video description as well. I'll see you there.